This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1453. Tips for Healthy Traveling by Rachel Trotta of racheltrotta.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Hey there, welcome to another Tuesday edition of Optimal Health Daily. This is one of many podcasts where we read to you from blogs for free so that you don't have to read them yourself. Except on Fridays, that's where I do something a little different. That's where I answer your questions. Now to check out our other shows, just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this. Now today's topic, okay, it really hits home with me. When I used to travel pre-COVID, I would always come back with a cold or the flu. Actually, one time, I came back with an ear infection. And another time, I came back with strep throat, both of which are really rare to get as an adult, but yet somehow I still managed to get them. So it sounds like I need some of Rachel's advice. So with that, let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. Tips for Healthy Traveling by Rachel Trotta of racheltrotta.com. Yes, you can stay fit on vacation. The most common out that I hear people give themselves regarding health and fitness outside of the holidays is travel. People typically lose progress when they take a trip, and the narrative usually sounds something like this. I couldn't diet on vacation. Or, I had to try, fill in the blank with some amazing local food or local beverage. And finally, well, I didn't have a gym. The common theme is the fear of missing out and of being too mercurial with fitness and health habits. However, I think that these motives reveal something deeper than simply letting loose. I wanna turn this reasoning upside down and ask a more probing question. Do you feel like you're depriving yourself or over-exercising on a regular basis? This is truly the root of the issue. If when you travel, you give yourself permission to enjoy food and eat what you want and relax and it's tons of fun, why aren't you doing that in your normal life? The problem with viewing normal life as this indefinite restriction and hard exercise in order to reach goals is that it promotes an all or nothing approach. It creates an atmosphere that communicates in order to attain or maintain my goal weight, I have to make constant sacrifices. Then using this mindset, a vacation or holiday is the perfect opportunity to truly go crazy and binge, torpedoing health goals and creating a feeling of guilt and self-sabotage upon return. So it's important to address that fundamental mindset issue before attempting to maintain fitness and health habits on a vacation so that you can avoid the yo-yo diet cycle of restriction, binging, and remorse. So what's the solution? Allow yourself to eat normal, well-balanced, moderately portioned, whole foods-based, nutrient-rich meals that taste good all the time. Adjust your mindset that exercise is not punishment for eating and that calories are not a golf score where you're aiming for zero. Then in that context, a vacation or business trip is simply a manageable and actually fun challenge to your normal routine rather than an opportunity to go absolutely wild. Some simple tricks. I remember returning from a two-week-long trip to Italy and France with my partner, and it was incredible. At the end of the trip, we both remarked that our pants were fitting a little looser. Considering that we are both in excellent physical shape, this is quite an accomplishment, especially since neither of us were consciously attempting to eat quote-unquote lightly. However, the magic is that we don't have to count calories or deprive ourselves because we have a set of tools and tricks that we have built up over the years as a health-conscious couple. Here are a few of my favorite things to do on vacation to maintain my fitness while still enjoying food with freedom and fun. One, bring one pair of shoes that you can walk at least 10 miles in and then actually walk a lot. These shoes don't have to be athletic shoes. It may sound extreme, but if you've ever been to any unfamiliar metropolitan center and are in decent shape, you know that you can easily walk yourself to exhaustion without realizing how far you've gone. We were in Venice for one day on this trip, and on that day, we walked over 13 miles. Yes, we walked a full half marathon in a city that's only a little larger than Central Park. 
Fortunately, because I live in New York City, I am armed with several pairs of shoes that can go the distance. Converse are at the top of my list. The benefit is that walking is wonderful exercise. Even though it's not intense and won't help you with your strength gains, it's an important component of health and wellness. And yes, it burns calories. Two, get to know the local grocery stores. Wherever you are staying, there is surely some kind of convenience store, if not a full grocery store. Even for a short trip, it's worth it to stock up on the following items. Water or plain seltzer water, Greek yogurt, fruit and berries, bread and peanut butter, and mixed nuts and dried fruit. And if you're staying in an apartment or a hotel with a kitchenette and your trip is longer, I would add the following to the list. Lettuce, tomatoes, olive oil, balsamic vinegar, cooked meat, and cheese. It's so important when you travel that you don't have to dine out at every meal. Your caloric balance will be much more reasonable if you eat at least one meal a day at your place of residence. Plus, shopping at a local grocery store is an excellent way to get to know the culture better, especially if you're traveling abroad. Three, eat when you're hungry. My partner developed a great mantra on the trip. When is the right time to eat? Now, what is the right thing to eat? Whatever you have. We are both notorious for mood crashes when food runs out, so we always made sure to pack snacks and water and eat whenever possible. The long-term benefit of this is that when you are generally well-fed, you are less desperate for any food option that puts calories in your belly. You make better choices when presented with food options, and you can hold out longer for a better restaurant. Four, train your glutes. In terms of formal exercises, no weight chair workouts are realistic and extremely helpful in pretty much any type of accommodations. I advise skipping intense workouts that will make you sore in favor of simple and effective glute workouts like the following. Chair only workout. Box squats, 15 reps, three sets. One leg squats, 15 reps for each leg, three sets. The Warrior Three, 15 reps on each side and three sets. Alternating reverse lunges, 15 reps on each leg and three sets total. Plank, 60 seconds, three sets. Side plank, 30 seconds each side, three sets. And finally, bridges, 20 reps, three sets. Glute workouts help to manage excess sitting from flights and train and bus rides and compound movements like squats also use larger muscles and recruit more energy from your body's stores. You just listened to the post titled Tips for Healthy Traveling by Rachel Trotta of racheltrotta.com. Speaking of traveling, if planning a vacation stresses you out, check out Apple Vacations. For over 50 years, Apple Vacations has provided affordable, top-quality vacation packages. Apple Vacations will help you plan your entire getaway with confidence from start to finish. That's personalized service, exceptional values, and so much more. They're known as America's favorite vacation company for good reason. Plus, you can choose destinations like Mexico, the Caribbean, Central America, Hawaii, and the continental U.S. Book confidently when you add Travel Protection Plus to your trip, which means you can cancel or change your reservation with no additional change fees. Now, for a limited time, you can use promo code SAND75 and take $75 off your stay at Live Aqua in Cancun or Punta Cana. Just go to applevacations.com slash optimal dash health dash daily to get this steal of a deal to your favorite Live Aqua resort today. That's applevacations.com slash optimal dash health dash daily. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Okay, so based on Rachel's article, I think I know where I go wrong when I travel. When I travel, I would basically try and replicate the intense workouts I get at home. I'm good about packing my own non-perishable snacks and eating nutritious foods and drinking plenty of water. But I don't sleep well when I'm away from my own bed. And yet at the same time, 
Again, I continue to train intensely. This is a losing combination. Traveling in and of itself is exhausting for me. And by forcing my body to continue to train intensely without adequate sleep is likely going to deplete my immune system. So instead of trying to keep pace with my usual routine, I can remind myself that all of the walking I'm doing is a nice change from the workouts my body's used to. If I'm missing the intensity of some resistance training, I don't need to go all out and I can scale it back and perform some body weight exercises. And in fact, the next time I travel, this is gonna be my new plan. And I'm sure I'll come back healthy on my next trip. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being a subscriber of the show. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.